Hello. Today, I'm going to walk you through what a test cross is and how to do one. And by the way, if you find this video to be helpful, please do subscribe to my channel. That's how YouTube figures out which videos they should recommend to other people looking for help on this topic. So what is a test cross? Well, what happens if we know the phenotype of a trait, but we don't know the genotype? Now, remember, the phenotype is the outward expression of gene, what you can see or visualize or test. The genotype is the genes themselves. So, for instance, here we see a purple flower. This is a, a pea plant, right? And pea plants can have different color flowers. Now, this is a purple flowered pea plant. Now, purple is the dominant allele, right, gene version, the dominant allele um, for pea plant colors. So we can have white flowers, we can have purple flowers, and purple is going to be the dominant allele. However, if we have a purple flowering pea plant, we don't know if it's homozygous dominant, big P, big P, or whether it's heterozygous, meaning that it has the dominant big P allele, but also the recessive little p allele. So if we receive something and we see the phenotype, but we don't know if that means that this is a homozygous dominant or a heterozygous individual, we can do a test cross to determine the genotype of this unknown organism. So what is a test cross? In a test cross, what we do is we're going to cross or, or breed or pollinate the organism with the unknown genotype, in this case, it's our purple flowering pea plant, and we're going to cross that with a homozygous recessive pea plant color, okay? And then we're going to analyze the results. Now, I just mentioned to you that pea plant flowers can come in white, and white is actually the recessive allele. So to have white flowers on pea plants, then the genotype has to be little p, little p, okay? That individual has to have two recessive alleles because white is the recessive allele. So we are going to cross this pea plant here, which is purple. We don't know if it's big p, big p, or big p, little p. We're going to create a cross with this plant and a white flowering pea plant because the white flowering plant is homozygous recessive. Now, based upon the next generation, right, the F1 results, we'll be able to determine the genotype of this parent plant with purple flowers. Now, I know you're thinking, why homozygous recessive? Like, why don't you use a heterozygous pea plant, for instance? Well, the answer is homozygous recessive, you have to have two of the recessive alleles present. So it First off, just by looking at the plant, it's a white flowering pea plant, you know you have a homozygous recessive individual. And secondly, because it has two recessive alleles, that allows you to very easily see in the next generation, you know, if white flowers show up in the next generation, well, because white is recessive, then this parent purple plant here must have also had a recessive allele. So remember this, okay? With the test cross, you're always going to cross your unknown genotype organism here with a homozygous recessive individual. Okay, so we're going to set up our test cross. And here it is, okay? The first thing we need to do is figure out using statistics in a Punnett square, well, what will the offspring look like if this parent plant, this purple plant, is homozygous dominant? And then on the other hand, what would the offspring look like if the parent plant was heterozygous? So here's the test cross that we're actually going to physically do by crossing that purple flower plant with the white flower plant. And now we need to go through what to expect in the offspring if that parent plant is heterozygous or homozygous. Okay, so we know that that purple flower plant can be big P, big P or it can be big P, little p, because the purple color is dominant over the recessive. So it could have either of those genotypes. Let's go ahead and figure out the first scenario, right? That the plant with this unknown genotype is big P, big P. So that means it's homozygous dominant. So here on the left side of our Punnett square, we're going to put the two possible alleles that can be passed down. And we're assuming that this first plant, this is scenario one, is going to be big P, big P. And so that means that the father's sperm can pass along big P or it can pass along big P, right? Because those two alleles are going to be separated into different sperm during meiosis. Now, the same thing is going to happen here um, on the top, and we're going to put 
the alleles that are found in the mother's eggs on the top of this Punnett square. So the mother, being homozygous recessive, has two little peas. So she can pass along little pea in one egg or her other little pea in the other egg. And now we can say, okay, well, if this sperm fertilizes this egg, what are we going to get? We're going to get big P, little p. Okay, how about this sperm and this egg? Well, that's going to be big P, little p. And this sperm and this egg, big P, little p. This sperm and this egg, big P, little p. So when we look here at the genotypes of the offspring, they're all heterozygous in this first scenario. Because if the father is big P, big p, well, that means that he can only pass along the big P dominant allele for this purple color. Okay, so what would we expect the phenotype to be? Okay, big P, big P. Well, we know that the dominant purple is dominant over the recessive white allele. So that would be a purple flowered plant. Same thing with this and same thing for the other two as well, because they all have the same genotype. So if we do our cross with the actual plants and we find that the F1 generation, right, the kids, the offspring are all purple, then we know that the father must have been homozygous dominant and have two dominant purple alleles. So now we know when we do our cross in real life, if that plant with the unknown genotype is big P, big P, then all of the F1 flowers, all of the next generation's flowers should be purple. Now let's do the other scenario though, because we know that this purple flowering plant could be heterozygous. It could be big P, little p. So we simply do the same thing for the second scenario, okay? So now we're assuming the plant is going to be big P, little p, heterozygous. So again, we're going to put the different alleles on the left from the father plant and the mother plant on the top. So the father is heterozygous. So it can pass along the big P allele or it can pass along the little p allele. Now the mother, again, remember, there's going to be a test cross. So that means that the other plant is going to be homozygous recessive. And so it will have little p and little p as possible recessive alleles that it can pass along because it has two recessive alleles. That's what homozygous recessive means. Okay, so now let's figure it out. If the sperm with this big P allele fertilizes this egg, we're going to get big P, little p. If this sperm fertilizes this egg, we're going to get big P, big p. If this sperm fertilizes this egg, we're going to get little p, little p. And similarly, if this sperm fertilizes this egg, then we're going to get little p, little p. So this is the genotype possibilities in the offspring of this cross. Now let's look at the phenotype, right? Big P, big P is going to be what color? Purple, right, because there's one dominant allele and one recessive allele, and that dominant allele dominates over the recessive allele. It masks the recessive allele. Okay, so how about the one next to it? Big P, little p, again, is going to be purple. But how about down here? Here, we have the possibility of little p, little p, and that is a white flowering plant. And the same here. So when we look at the possibilities, remember, this is scenario two. So if the father is heterozygous, then when we do our test cross and cross that father with a mother that's homozygous recessive, we're going to see that the offspring are 50% purple flowering and 50% white flowering. Okay, so in our test cross, if we see that the offspring are 50% white flowering and 50% purple flowering, then we know that the father was heterozygous. And that makes perfect sense, right? Because to have a white flowering plant, that plant has to receive two recessive alleles. We know that our test cross plant starts out being homozygous recessive. It can only pass along recessive alleles. So if the unknown plant can also pass along recessive alleles, then we're going to have offspring that are homozygous recessive and will have white flowers. Okay, so when we do our test cross and we cross this unknown genotype plant with our homozygous recessive plant, if we see that in the F1 generation that all of the offspring have purple flowers, 
then we know, because we figured out the two scenarios, we know that the father plant, right, the one with the unknown genotype, was homozygous dominant and only had dominant alleles to pass along. Now, on the other hand, if we find that the offspring, the F1 generation, have 50% of them have purple flowers and 50% of them have white flowers, well, then we know that scenario two was actually what happened and that that plant with an unknown genotype was actually heterozygous, had one dominant allele and one recessive allele, and that recessive allele shows up at 50% in that F1 generation. Okay, so remember, a test cross is where we're going to cross this organism we have with unknown genotype with a homozygous recessive individual, and then we're going to analyze the results. We figure out what the two scenarios are, okay? Is this a uh, plant or fruit fly or whichever organism we're using, is it big P, big P? or is it big P, little p? We figure out using a Punnett square what the offspring will be expected to be in either case, and then we actually physically do the cross where we pollinate the flowers and we look to see what flowers are found in the next generation. If all of the F1 generation has the dominant phenotype, then the unknown genotype of the father plant was also homozygous dominant. However, if 50% of the offspring have the dominant phenotype and 50% have the recessive phenotype, then we know that that father plant was heterozygous and had one dominant and one recessive allele.